and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a safe and good start to their week. In this class, we are looking at the IELTS reading section and I'm going to discuss a couple of tricks and strategies to get those higher band scores that you need to practice at home to master. So that's what we will be uh, focusing on. This is a members chat class, which means uh, everybody is welcome to watch. Members are able to uh, join the chat. We will have an all chat class coming up in about 90 minutes for everybody focusing on speaking part three. Hi, Maksud. Hi, Pavan. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Um, students, while we wait for some more of your peers, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS materials and strategies and videos. Check us out there. And for the general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general ielts-help.com. Now, the reading passage that we're using today comes from our academic IELTS website, but this reading passage could easily be a reading section three uh, passage for the general IELTS as well. Hi, Maksud, Pavan, Alexander. Hi again. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at these websites super quick so you know what I'm talking about. This is the academic one here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join the premium package, as many students do every day. And this is the uh, general IELTS version here with the green background. Uh, you can click that red button. And uh, our regular students who have access always use it every day. We're always loading up new materials, new videos. Um, we've uh, just uh, updated, upgraded our uh, speaking component on the website. So you can speak to each other, video chat through the website. I'll talk more about that next class. It's really exciting. Um, and if you have questions, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Welcome, Lapuj Nun, new member. Happy that you've joined us. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with some of our perks. Okay, students, so again, uh, right now, reading. Uh, we'll look at a passage pretty quick here, and then uh, we'll have a speaking part three class for everyone, and then uh, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'll upload some new uh, HD videos, no classes, and then we will have more classes starting on Wednesday. So these live classes, they're Wednesday to Saturday, okay? Hi, Lafouge, there you are. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. It's a beautiful, unique name I haven't seen before. All right, uh, so let's get into our reading. Uh, students, this is reading passage one from book one, test three. Okay, so this is coming out of test three. Now, um, for those of you who have access to our materials, do remember that we actually have native British English people read these passages as well. So you can see here it says reading audio CD3 track five. So you can do these kind of read-alongs, okay? I hope that many of you are using those. All right, so uh, here we go. Uh, what's the first step? So when you open up um, the uh, part of the question booklet in the exam or in the computer-based exam, you get to your reading section, what do you do first, members? So what is your very, very first step always? Okay, please remind me of what you should do right away. Maksud says, read the title. Yeah, Charlie, it's not, it, it is the topic, but title is more accurate. So Pavan says, read the title and visualize. Very nice, uh, Pavan. So uh, that's what we'll do. So Tristan da Cunha, that doesn't even sound English. Uh, An Island of Remote Curiosity. Okay, so clearly this is the name of some island. And then this is the full title, An Island of Remote Curiosity. So when you read this title, uh, what do you see, students? What do you see in your mind's eye? Okay. 
So yeah, definitely step number one, read and visualize. Immediately engage your inner eye, okay? So step one, carefully read the title as it summarizes the whole essay, right? So carefully read the title and immediately visualize the content of the passage based on the title, okay? So here, what do you see? Tristan da Cunha, an island of remote curiosity. Okay, so what do you see when you read this title? So Charlie says, I see a remote island in the middle of the sea. Okay, good. Uh, which sea, Charlie? The Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, the Arabic Ocean? Where do you see it? What do you see on the island? What's there? Is there are there people, treasure, palm trees, monkeys, coconuts on those palm trees? A beach. So what do you see? See it clearly. Okay. All right. But it's a good start, Charlie. Okay. So I see an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I say Pacific Ocean because, as many of you know, I'm from Canada, from British Columbia, which uh, from Vancouver Island, which is on the Pacific Ocean. So um, that's where I'm from. So I see the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Tito says, I see an island full of curiosity. All right, Tito, I'm curious how you see curiosity on an island. Maybe you see some dinosaurs or some tr strange trees, a giant volcano perhaps, right? That could be interesting. Ooh, a little interesting island like Hawaii. Okay, good. All right. So I see an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with a volcano, monkeys, Palm trees, strange crystals. Okay, I actually, <laughs> I'm very visual. I love, love reading. I was going to say like, but love reading. Um, all right, good. So now you're getting into it. All right. Now, here are some strategies for visualization. Okay. Number one, see the image clearly with details. This will help you understand. Okay. Number two, see unique features like a volcano. Okay. This will help you remember. And number three, include yourself in the image. Okay. I am suntanning on the island. This will help you recall information. So students, this is, um, this, uh, these strategies, these steps, that I'm giving you, it's uh, taken from educational psychology, okay? So um, when you learn about uh, techniques of how to process information effectively, quickly, and so that you can use it later, uh, these are the basic steps to your visualization, to seeing information, and we're going to practice these steps today when we read, okay? So firstly, you always want to see the images clearly. So when you're thinking about an island, don't just see an island uh, with uh, a palm tree like that, okay? But see more details. So maybe see a little monkey in the tree, see some bananas in the tree, um, maybe uh, see some rocks 
on the beach, see some crabs walking around as well. And of course, the more you do this, the more you train, the more details you're going to see quickly inside of your mind, all right? When you do that, this will help you to understand what you're reading better, okay? So this will increase your understanding, your comprehension, all right? This is a part of active reading, visual reading, and memory enhancement, all right? Uh, the second is you want to see some unique features, okay? So you want to see something on the island that catches your attention, like a volcano. This is a miniature volcano uh, that's exploding and shooting out lava into the sky, okay? So it's a lava-filled island. Maybe you see a dinosaur on the island as well, okay? That makes it unique is because we know that dinosaurs... Uh, are no longer uh, living. So when you see something unique, that will help you to remember the information. So it will assist your brain in holding information, okay? This is a trick that's used by advertising and companies. So when you're looking at all of those television advertisements, and a lot of them are really strange. I bet you'll agree with me that a lot of TV ads seem like they're made for crazy people. They have people shouting and weird little pink elephants exploding out of cannons and all kinds of strange things happening. It's not by accident. And when you say, oh, that's a really strange ad, that's what they wanted you to say because they know that when you feel that way, your brain will help to remember that advertisement. So that's an advertising trick. These are tricks used in marketing as well, of course. And that's why ads are crazier and crazier all the time because they're competing with each other to get your brain to remember information, okay? All right, so use that strategy for yourself when you're reading, okay? Find the information interesting and make it unique. Visualize it uniquely. Hi, Mohit, welcome. All right, and then the third step is include yourself, okay? That's a very, very important step. So you want to be, so this is Adrian here, and I'm laying down and I'm suntanning uh, on the beach, okay? Having maybe a margarita. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm on the beach on this island. And the reason for that is because when the brain feels like it's involved in the information, then it has a much easier time to recall, even in short term, okay? One of the most common complaints that students have in the IELTS exam is, I read the passage, I understand the passage, and then I forget the passage. So I get to the questions and I have to go back and search because I forgot what I read. Okay, so we have to defeat this challenge. We have to improve this skill. The way to do that is include yourself, okay? Just think, students, uh, when you watch a movie and you're far away, you're not included, then one or two months later, often you forget the movie or the TV show. But when you watch a family movie where you are in that movie, you remember that situation for a long time. Okay, all right, so these are facts. This is human psychology. As some of you know, that's my training is in psychology and development, education, interpersonal psychology. So that's what I want to pass to you to help you improve the IELTS, okay? All right, so again, clearly, okay, uniquely and include yourself, all right? That makes sense, right? Uh, you have to practice it. It's something that takes practice, okay? So this is what we're going to do, students. So here we go. We're going to read this passage together, and I'm going to ask you uh, with each paragraph what you see, and uh, please remember, unique, include yourself. So let's read paragraph one together. We'll deal with the questions later. Don't worry about the questions right now, okay? Abhishek, I'm glad that makes sense. All right, here we go. So. Enlarge this a little bit for us. All right, here we go. So, 
One more time from the top, Tristan da Cunha, an island of remote curiosity. Tristan da Cunha is an island in the South Pacific Ocean formed by volcanic activity and part of the British Overseas Territory called St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan da Cunha. Tristan da Cunha is generally considered to be the most remotely inhabited place on Earth. Because of its extreme isolation and its small population, Tristan da Cunha is a fascinating experiment in sociology and genetics. All right. So when you read this paragraph, what do you see? So in one or two sentences, students, Write down what you see when you read this paragraph. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare, okay? All right, so that's what I see. Let's see what you see. So Pavan says, I see the geography of the island. Again, remember, unique, okay, detailed, and include yourself. So Charlie says, I see the island fern by volcanic eruption, a very small population of people live there. Tito says, I see myself standing in front of a volcano and some people researching on the island. Really nice, Tito. That's exactly what you should be doing, okay? Uh, Maksud says, I see an island with some people. Yeah, okay, now Maksud, make sure that you're not just looking at the island from far away, but be on the island, be with the people right? So I'm kind of similar to what Tito said here. So I see three scientists in white lab coats doing experiments on a tiny island in the middle of the ocean as I'm running towards them because of an exploding volcano behind me. Oh, hey, what are those scientists doing there? Okay, so that's what I see. And again, with practice, this happens quickly. Okay, good, good. All right. Let's keep going here. I'm sure some of you are visualizing further. So let's keep going. Here we go. Okay. Next, uh, next paragraph. Read with me. Okay. Let me darken that up for you a little bit so it's a bit sharper. Here we go. Okay. There you are. All right. The island was first discovered in 1506. Uh, students, this is a reading class, so don't just listen to me read, but make sure you're reading with me. Okay, let's start this one more time. Um, so the island was first discovered in 1506 by a Portuguese explorer named Tristão da Cunha, who named the island after himself. The name of the island was later anglicized by the inhabitants into Tristan da Cunha. In 1816, the United Kingdom annexed the island, taking control of it. They used it as a marine military base for a number of decades in the 19th century before it fell into disuse after the construction of the Suez Canal. The Second World War, however, brought renewed purpose to the island. It was used as a top secret British naval station codenamed HMS Atlantic Isle. The purpose of the station was to monitor the waters for German U-boats. All right. So when you read this paragraph, what do you see? What do you see in your mind's eye when you read this paragraph. 
Again, in just one or two sentences. I'm going to do the same. All right, so what do you see? So Dr. S Krishna says, I see the discovery and the history of the island. Now, Dr. Krishna, you can't really see discovery and you can't really see history because that's abstract, right? So in this case, I want you always to write down the actual physical, visible concepts that you see. Okay, and again, remember students, you have to include yourself. Okay, same idea, Mohit. You can't see a question like how it got its name. Okay, so Maksud says, I see the man standing near me who called his island by his name. Good, so Maksud is basically saying, hey, uh, girls and guys, what I'm seeing is uh, here's the island and here I am. And uh, here's the uh, Portuguese captain, maybe with a big captain's hat with a feather sticking out of it, who has now put his flag down and said, hey, we're calling this island by my name. And then, whoa-oh, here comes the uh, British uh, naval ship chasing us off. They need it for military purposes, okay? So that's what you want to see. Very good. Uh, Bumi says, uh, use it as a military base and then disuse after World War II. Yeah, but Bumi, again, so you don't want to just recite. You don't want to just repeat what you read because your brain will not hold that information. Okay, so you need to be a little bit more imaginative, right? This is exactly what our grandparents or great-grandparents did while reading before the invention of the television. They were much more creative. Hence, all those great inventions like uh, automobiles and submarines and airships, okay? So uh, that's what we want to do. We want to reignite that ability of our brain to be creative and imaginative and active while we read, okay? It's in you to do that, okay? You're born able to do that, all right? Okay, Tito says, I see a man taking a man discovering the island and the British government taking hold of the island and manipulating it. Yes, Tito, so that's good. All right, so yeah, I see uh, myself as the Portuguese explorer. So I am this guy uh, discovering the island, putting down the flag, and then here comes the boat and they're chasing me away. I'm like, ah, because they need the island to monitor the water for the Germans, okay? Now, if some of you are thinking I'm mad and I've lost my mind, I guarantee that if you practice this for one week with all of your reading passages for the IELTS exam, you're going to see your reading band score go up by half a band after one or two weeks of doing visual active reading. Promise you. Try it out. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, before you think I've gone crazy. All right. Here we go. So uh, paragraph C. Read with me. And again, we'll go through this. So according to a recent consensus, the island has a population of just 263 people who mainly reside in the settlement known as Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. It is thought that the residents of the island descend from just 15 ancestors of which eight were male and seven were female. Because the reproduction pool is so small, the residents of the island suffer from a number of medical disorders. There is rampant asthma on the island, which is thought to be a result of the known fact that three of the original founders of the island suffered from asthma. 
Based on the endemic asthma affl afflicting inhabitants of the island today, it is thought that there is a genetic underpinning for the condition. Further evidence comes from islanders commonly suffering from glaucoma, a degenerative eye condition which left untreated can result in blindness. So what do I see there? I see myself with a few group of people, seven other men, um, sorry, six other men, uh, yeah, seven other men, uh, seven other women, and uh, I see some of, of my, my friends breathing a little bit heavy, like, <gasps> that's asthma, right? So I can see that, and I'm trying to maybe help them, okay, and also some problems with their eyes, all right? So that's what I see. Welcome, Musafir, to our group of members. Uh, here we go, students, so let's keep reading. There are just eight surnames among the 263 residents of Tristan da Cunha corresponding roughly to the eight original male ancestors. Since there is almost no emigration to the island, the surnames are kept intact for many generations. Education on the island is very limited. Children only attend school until the age of 15, with the option of taking the British standardized test for secondary school graduates once they have completed schooling. As a consequence of the low quality of education, standardized test scores are generally very poor. Another indication of the island's remoteness and relative lack of control with the outside world is that the English spoken among its natives is very different from that spoken in the rest of the world. What do I see for this paragraph? I see myself sitting in a small school. I'm trying to study some math and some English, but it's really difficult. And I'm taking an IELTS exam, which is a British standardized exam. And I only got a band 4.5 because the education is really bad. So there's my IELTS certificate, Tristan da Cunha. I got 4.5. Okay, so visualize, connect to yourself. Okay, <laughs> all right, that should be an easy one, especially for learning IELTS to visualize, because IELTS is an English standardized exam. <laughs> Maksud says, yep, yep, I got that. All right, I'm sure a couple of you probably thought about that. Okay, um, here we go, paragraph F, let's keep reading. Arguably, one of the most interesting facts about Tristan da Cunha was that until the aftermath of the Second World War, the only currency in place was the potato. For example, the newspaper, the Tristan Times, could be purchased for four big potatoes. Today, Tristan da Cunha uses the British pound as its currency, which is odd, because neighboring St. Helena, 2,173 kilometers away, of which Tristan da Cunha shares its status as a British overseas territory, uses the St. Helena pound and not the British pound. Since Tristan da Cunha was formed by volcanic activity and the volcano which formed it is still active, the inhabitants of the island live in constant danger of the volcanic eruption. The last such eruption occurred as recently as 1961 when all of the islanders had to be evacuated to England. While some communities around the world participate in fire, earthquake, or tornado drills, the residents of Tristan da Cunha participate in evacuation drills where they practice the protocol for evacuation of the island in case of a volcanic eruption. All right, so what did I see there? That was beautifully visual. Um, I saw myself on Tristan da Cunha on this island, big volcano behind me. I have a couple of nice potatoes. I go, I buy myself a newspaper from the newspaper stand with my potatoes. And in the newspaper, I see an article about danger Volcano might erupt soon. Practice getting on a boat and running away. Okay. And then I wanted to buy a boat 
from my neighbor, it was far away in St. Helena, but I couldn't because they use a different money. I use the British pound now and they don't, okay? Dr. Krishna, very nice. So Dr. Krishna says, I see myself using a barter system with potatoes and then I got some British pounds and then I had to go to England because of this volcanic eruption. Good, Dr. Krishna. So nice, okay? Uh, Pooja says, I'm a journalist studying active volcanoes, discovered that many people are suffering from asthma and glycoma. Nice, Pooja. There we go. Now you're all being creative. It's a beautiful part of our brain that's being suppressed by modern technology. Sometimes I'm kind of jealous of past generations that didn't have TV but had books. And I think some people are still that way. Some people still enjoy books more than movies. So here we go. And this is why, right? Because we're a part of the story. We're in the story. And when you're in the story, it becomes so much more valuable and you can use that information, right? You can get a high band score. Uh, G, the Tristan economy is built mainly upon farming. All land is owned by the community. That is to say there is no individual land ownership. Another significant part of the economy is the exportation of crayfish and lobster, mainly to Japan and the United States. A fire that occurred in 2008 greatly affected both the domestic and export economies. Tristinians are fiercely proud and independent people. Even when given the choice to stay in England after exile due to the volcanic eruption, almost every resident returned to the island. All right, again, very nice and visual. What am I doing here visualizing? Okay, it's not my house. It's everybody's house. It's not my land. It's everybody's land. And I'm fishing for lobster and I'm selling the lobster to the British and I'm making some money. And when I have the chance, I always come back to this island, right? Super cool. So now we're going to put this strategy into effective use. One more time, students, remember, see images clearly. See those lobsters and those crayfish. See their colors, their claws, okay? You'll understand. See the unique features. So you're that scientist, or as Pooja said, you're that journalist on the island researching the residents and the volcano. Very good, Pooja. Uh, number three, include yourself, be a part of it. Okay. Rosny says, I have a backpack and I return to the island and I'm farming away and getting those crayfish. Good, Roshni. All right, now check this out. Okay, let's see how well this really works. The proof is in the pudding, as the idiom goes in English. The proof is in the pudding. It means, can we actually figure out the answers to questions? with this strategy that we just used. All right, well, let's try it. Okay, uh, so uh, reading passage one has seven paragraphs, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Which paragraph contains the following information? So this is matching the information to the um, paragraph. Write the correct letter in boxes one to five on your answer sheet. The different types of money used on the island. Which paragraph had that information? When did I visualize the different kinds of money? Can anybody tell me? Was it A, B, C, D, or F? You're going to see that uh, this strategy can really help you to catalog information because we're visual thinkers, so we keep order of information much better when we visualize. Okay, so Bumi says it's the one with the potatoes and the British pound. Right, Bumi, and where was that? Was that in the beginning, middle, or the end? So when did we read that information? So Tito says somewhere around D to F. Okay, anybody else? When did you see the potatoes? Abhishek says that was F. Pavan says E. See, so what's really beautiful is that all of you are, even if you don't know exactly, you're very close. You're like, mm, I know that was closer to the end. 
and it was the, and you know what information you're looking for. So even if you have to look at the passage, you're going to be very, very quick. And a lot of you are saying, I think it was F. The most interesting fact about Tristan de Kuna was that uh, until the aftermath of the Second World War, the only currency in place was the potato. Okay, so as long as you're thinking D, E, or F, you're right, okay? And you'll be able to find it quickly. So, and I bet most of you knew that you're thinking about the potato here. Okay, because you saw that. Okay, you saw the potato, you saw the British pound. Okay, you're buying the newspaper. So it's F. Okay. Um, exam results of Tristan students. So this is where I kind of failed my IELTS exam because I don't really have good opportunities to learn. Was that before the potatoes or after the potatoes? You should remember that. Okay, Lapouche says, I think that was E. I think I saw that right before I saw the potatoes, right? And you can even connect, Lapouche. I'm having trouble reading the newspaper, right? Lapouche says, that was before the potatoes. Yeah. So if you really want to check, of course, if you have to skim or scan the whole passage, that's a big problem. That takes way too long. But... Um, E, education on the island is very limited. Children only attend school until the age of 15. That's all you have to look at, and you're sure now that it's going to be E. Okay. Now, again, students, once you practice this, you're going to be very fast at coming up with the right answers. All right. Number three, discussion of the original inhabitants of the island. So if here, if I'm searching, then what do I have to look for? What was that visualization? For number three, discussion of the original inhabitants of the island. What am I looking for here? What am I thinking about here? Yeah, so Bumi, very good. Bumi says it's the eight males and seven females. All right, and was that before or after the education? The original inhabitants would be the ancestors. So it's the eight males. This, yeah, Charlie Sen says it's the 263 people on the island, the eight men, seven women. I remember that, the ancestors. Very good, Pooja. Before education. So what do you think? Like C or D? Something like that, right? C or D. Um, now, those numbers are fairly easy to look for, right? So, here we go. According to a recent consensus, the island has a population of just 263 people who mainly reside in this settlement. It is thought that the residents of the island descended from just 15 ancestors. So is it C or D? There are just eight surnames among the 263 residents corresponding roughly to the eight original male ancestors. Since there's almost no emigration to the island, the surnames are kept intact for many generations. Which one is better, C or D? C is the better answer, okay? C is the better answer. So for those of you answering C, you got it, okay? That's the first mention of the original inhabitants. It's the discussion of the original inhabitants. So be really careful with words like that, okay? All right, so C is the right answer. All right, um, the island as an armed forces outpost. That should be a really easy one. I don't even think you should be searching for that one. Yeah, Muxud was very quick there. Muxud's like, guys, girls, that was an easy one uh, because we visualized that very, very quickly. And Muxud, Abhishek, yeah, Pavan, you're absolutely right. We don't even need to look for that, right? So that was the second visualization. Tristan de Kuna the Portuguese sailor being chased away by the British, right? That was very clearly paragraph B. 
Um, number five, geography of the island. So where the island is located. Pavan says number five is A. That was the first one. It's in the middle of the ocean. And Pavan, you're absolutely right. It is A. Okay. So F, E, C, B, A. Those are the correct answers. Now, again, when you practice this, there's a good chance that you can answer at least four out of five of these accurately with and confidently without even going back to the passage. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep applying this skill of active visualization and reading. Here we go. Uh, match the following places with facts about them from the passage. So this is matching information, this type of question. You're doing great, by the way, students. You're doing great. Keep those visualizations in mind, okay? So here we have St. Helena, Tristan da Cunha, United Kingdom, and Portugal. So these are four places mentioned in the passage. Of course, the topic is Tristan da Cunha. The neighboring island is St. Helena. United Kingdom is the controller of the island and Portugal was the discoverer of the island. That's what I remember. So uh, let's do this. Number six, took political control of the island in the 19th century. A, B, C, or D. Who took control of the island in the 19th century? Was it St. Helena, Tristan de Cunha, United Kingdom, or Portugal? Yeah, very good. So a lot of you are saying, oh, that was easy because I remember the British boats chasing away Captain Tristan de Cunha. Okay, number seven, uses its own currency. So uses its own currency, A, B, C, or D. Which of these places uses their own currency? Let's see if you can do this without having to go back. All right, there's a little bit of disagreement there. For those of you who are answering A, you're correct. Uh, remember the visualization I was trying to buy a boat to escape from the island from St. Helena, but I couldn't because they use the St. Helena pound and I'm using the British pound, so I couldn't buy the boat. That was a problem that I had. I visualized that. I'm like, here's some British pound and they're like, we don't use that money, sorry. Um, all right, home to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, which place is home to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas? Now, of course, if you had to search or skim or scan names can work, although you have to be careful because in some IELTS passages, this type of name could appear in four paragraphs. So you might have to search the whole thing. So it's not a good idea. Okay. Let's see. Does anybody remember which is home? I didn't emphasize visualizing this. Let's see if any of you visualized it. The correct answer here was B because it said that the main settlement, so the main place where those 256 people live, in Tristan de Cunha is called Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. And this is also talking about the inhabitants of the island, right? So again, uh, I didn't explain everything to you that I saw, but I saw this, okay? So according to a recent consensus, the island has a population of just 263 people who mainly reside in this settlement known as Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. So um, to go back and give you more detail, I actually saw this little village and I saw the island in my head. Okay, and this is where again practice will come in handy. So here are the little homes and houses for these people. And then here was a sign that said, welcome to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. Okay, so does that make sense? You can actually visualize that here. You can see it there. 
So you can see the settlement of people and then this sign. I don't know, you probably know that there are a lot of signages for cities usually when you go into the city. Okay. All right. Uh, Puja, there will never be a double correct answer. No. Uh, Puja, you always have to look for the best answer. Okay, the best answer. All right. Okay. So let's keep going here. Okay, so we have it so far. Um, all right. Origin of the name Tristan de Cunha. Origin of the name Tristan de Cunha. A, B, C, or D. This one should be fairly easy. Lapouge says D. Yeah, I mean, even just the pronunciation, right? It's got to be Portugal. It's got to be Portugal. So D. Um, and then uh, number 10, Islanders had to be evacuated here after a natural disaster. Musafir, good. Okay, so number 10, Islanders had to be evacuated here. A, B, C, or D. I think this one is quite clear as well from the reading. Yeah, okay, so Abhishek says, yeah, it was the UK. Yeah, good, good, UK, exactly. Yeah, so C. Now, careful when you put your answers into the answer sheet. Make sure you don't accidentally write the word. You have to put the letter, of course. So always pay attention to the instructions, right? So that would have been C. And then uh, discovered the island. Who discovered the island? I think you'll get this one as well. Nice and quick again. Yeah, very good, Pavan. D. That's Portuguese, the Portuguese captain, right? So this is a nice visual passage. It's a good one to practice with. Students, you'll notice that some uh, passages are more visual, so it's easier to use this technique. Some are less visual, ones that talk about sociology or fine art or philosophy. But if you practice visualization, you can get good at this. All right, let's try the last two questions. Because the number of people that move permanently to the island is so small, what happens? So I have a good idea. Let's see if you can choose the right one. So because the number of people who move to the island is so small, what happens? I visualized this, so maybe some of you did as well. Yeah, Bumi, very good. So Bumi says their names stay the same. Uh, the way I visualized this, Bumi, is I kept introducing myself as Smith. Hi, I'm John Smith. Hi, I'm Adam Smith. Hi, I'm Sarah Smith. Hi, I'm Margaret Smith, <laughs> right? So you can visualize this, right? So last names remain the same for generations. Very good. A, absolutely. Okay. And uh, number 13, due to its remoteness, the dialect of Tristinians, dialect means their style of speaking. Okay. So it means the, the style of the English language. And thank goodness that you're not listening in the listening section to this kind of English. Otherwise, it might be very, very difficult, right? So, and a lot of you are already answering, it's very different from other variations of English. So that's correct. That would be C. Yeah. And maybe you heard that. That's auditory visualization. So you're hearing that. Okay. All right. Uh, very good job. Again, uh, the three points. So members, one more time, please. When you're visualizing, tell me, what are the three important points to pay attention to when you're visualizing information that you read or that you hear. By the way, you can use this strategy for listening as well, of course. So what are the three key steps to constantly pay attention to when you're processing information that you read by visualizing? Okay, give me all three, Tito. Give me all three. Okay, you've got one of them, Tito. 
but I want to see all three. Very good. That's number two, Tito. One more. Anybody can jump in. It doesn't just have to be Tito here. Yeah, Boomi, very good. So Boomi says, see the image with detail, include yourself, and see some unique features. There we go. Everybody else is now coming up with the right answers as well. Good, good, good. Yeah, be active. Be a part of what you see. Okay, good job, students. All right, everyone. If you want to learn a lot more effective strategies and skills coming from education psychology, uh, coming from communication uh, techniques, Visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS and you'll find a lot of these strategies in your full interactive course and of course in the videos as well. Now in 30 minutes everyone I will be back with some speaking, speaking part three, uh, strategy and practice. Great job, great participation everyone in today's class. Uh, keep going, keep pushing forward. Hopefully I will see you soon. Bye for now.